the rover can use this. I have the plan you ask for. It took some effort. Good, good. Thank you, Eivor. Here you are. And be careful. This brew will feel as cold as ice on your lips, yet will burn like a fire in your belly. I have not set foot in this realm in some time. I must find the witch Angerboda. She knows all that happens here. The witch's house. There you are. Illusions. But any obstacle can be overcome if looked at the right way. Underestimate the humans. You always did. When the end comes, they will outlive us. They are mindless <laughs> ravagers who will destroy us and inherit the Nine Realms. I cannot allow that. They are capable of more than you know, and I will not help you bring about their ruin. Then Anger, Boda. I have traveled far to find you. And you are brave to darken my door alone. Where is my lover, the dark fox that slinks between my sheets? Logi has stayed in Asgard to help rebuild the damage from a recent attack. How generous. And entirely unlike him. You used to be much better at lying. I am not Loki's keeper. I have come to understand Jotnar magic. Your method for moving Hooger from one body to another. The Mead? You seek the Mead? Hirokin! You have long outstayed your welcome. Then I will take my leave. But remember what I said, Angarboda. You will see things my way in time. The mead she spoke of. 
Where can I find it? A slip of the tongue. Forget what you heard. Do not play games with me, witch. You would sell any truth for the right price. If one had the means to pay it. There is a root called Hag's Claw. It grows at the bottom of a waterfall to the south, at the forest's edge. Bring me three roots from the place where the Red Moss thrives. Then we will speak of the mead. I will hold you to it. This land hides its secrets well, but no secret is safe from me. Anchor for the set to look where the red moss grows. A cavern beneath the lake. This land is savage and full of marbles. everywhere in this realm. That must be the Hag's Claw Angerbo that spoke of. A pungent root. There should be more around. The air smells strange down here. those cursed roots. That will be enough for anger, Boda. I should find my way out. I have done as you asked. Now where is my wisdom? Give it a moment to brew. There. An elixir to ready your spirit. How will this bring me the meat? It will open your mind to the secrets of the world. While we wait, let us speak of Asgard. How fared your defenses after the last attack? We, uh... We have been weakened by treachery. Without time to rebuild, we, we may not withstand another attack. Wait. I... I did not mean to say that. I feel strange. Hexclaw has a way of untying the tongue. <laughs> now, you have said you want the mead, but how badly. How much would you sacrifice to be freed of fate's shackles? Would you give your tongue, your hand, your sight? I would. I would give all that and more. I would like to see that. Loki, what trickery is this? I have sapped your strength, Javi. 
and I will take your life if your answers displease me. Our son, Fenrir, a name I think you have heard before. Yes, in the final reckoning, the world Fenrir will be my doom. Now you know. Now you can no longer deceive. Tell me, what will you do with him? I want to kill him. But I cannot. I swore an oath to you, Loki, and I will not break it. I will not take his life. Fenrir will be imprisoned until the day of prophecy, when we will meet upon the field of battle, as we are fated to. Then we will bind you until that day, as you mean to bind our son. An eye for an eye. I see she let you live. You must have done something right. <laughs> let me help you down from there. No, no! Wait! 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 No! You could have let me down gently. That would presume I cared for your comfort. Then why release me at all? For the same reason you are in Jotunheim. You seek the mead, and I can help you get it. I assume there is a price. I want a small sample for myself. The rest is yours. Fair? Do I have a choice? Of course you do not. The mead is kept by Sutungr and his daughter Gunlother in the vault at their home in Utgardr. The vault is opened only on occasion of a great feast, when Sutungr shares the bounty of his cellar. And it would be a poor host who did not throw a feast for a distinguished visitor, say the High One of Asgard. You are not as ox-witted as I feared. Why do you want the meat? My motives are not your business, as yours are not mine. All you need to do is get it. I must bring a mighty gift to Suttunger, if I am to earn my welcome. That idiot drunkard Agir recently lost his cauldron to Suttunger in a wager, but it disappeared on the way to Utgardr. Suttunger would be grateful indeed if I returned that cauldron to him. Seek the tree that wears the scars of the World Serpent Scales. The cauldron would have passed by there. You might also bring a gift for Gunlother. There are treasures that would flatter her in Thrymmer's house by the lake near Utgardr. I will bear that in mind. When you have the mead, join me at the Well of Mimir. There I will show you how to escape your doom at Ragnarok. Should I search for the cauldron now, or head for Thrymir's hall? Get your wings, Sunan. Here is a tree Hirokin mentioned. Its bark cut deep by Jurmungandir's sharp scales. I should look around for the missing cauldron. <laughs> the midden of the great Jotun, Skrimir, dropped here long ago. Maybe the thieves took their burden inside. Moss all around. Hard to imagine this place once fitted a hand. <laughs> this area is off limits. The missing cauldron. 
But how did they get it into this cave? That was not there before. Hard to know what is real in this realm of illusion. to reach it. Too big to carry, but things are not always as they seem in Jotunheim. The cauldron has grown smaller. I'm getting the measure of these illusions. This cauldron should be enough to win Suttunger's favor. I could go to Utgard now. But a gift for Gunlother would improve my chances at getting the meat.
Thor's bridal circlet. This would be a gift worthy of Gunlothar's attention. You are small to my eyes, stranger. Small in stature, but great indeed. I am the one they call Javi, the High One of Asgard, and I come bearing a great gift. Your name is known to me, but what could mighty Sutunger want that a little thing like you can provide? Your great cauldron, stolen by Hymir's sons. Let this offering be a beginning to the end of our hostilities. Such a small thing, yet so much deeper than it seems. Appearances can be deceiving, can they not? <laughs> well spoken, Harvey. Our people may be enemies, but you have earned your welcome here. Thralls, an honored guest has come. Prepare a feast! I hope also to meet your daughter, Gunlother. I have heard much of her skill in the mystical arts. She will be toiling at her work, as ever. But be forewarned, she shuns the company of others. I could summon her to the feast if you like. We might discuss matters of alchemy on the way. That would please me. You will find her in her grotto, up the path, within the circle of stones. Have a care, though. You are safe in my presence, but you wander Utgard at your peril. I will be discreet. And Harvey, be kind. Gunnlother is different from you and I. No sense trying to change fate. What counts is how you face it. What do you see, Sunan? Here is the stone circle, but no way into the sanctum. Another illusion. Some time ago, we made powerful magic here. We sought to see all futures. But every road led to Ragnarok. Father does not visit here anymore. He sees no profit in it. But I am not yet ready to give up. You are Esir. I am. I have seen images of the future. Heard the voices of those who will come after us. Voices from... in there? Yes. I leave them words. Little packets of possibility, waiting for unknown ears, many ages hence. What do these future voices say? They seek the wisdom of the past. They speak of things to come. But even they cannot turn the tide of Ragnarok. There is to be a feast in my honor. Your father sent me to fetch you. No, not yet. 
Listen. I want you to hear the voices. Are you there, Prophet? Can you hear me? Perhaps another day. Another thread. Come. We must not keep Father waiting. Who are you? Winter's knife cuts deep. Sky pearls fall thick in this land. It... it is cold out here. How can that surprise you? I haven't been outside in... Uh, I don't know how long. You are devoted to your work. Not my work, my responsibility. My people ignore the disaster bearing down on them. Someone must do something. We have long searched for a solution, until the burden of it has bent my mind. I do not think as clearly as I once did. I have heard there is one method still untested. There is, but to activate it would mean defiling our well of knowledge, from which all of Midgard drinks. There is no telling the change it would wreak on humankind. It would bring chaos at the least, and I do not wish to hurt them. Even if it means the death of all Jotnar. We will find another way. We must. This land is quite beautiful. I had all but forgot. Toil and drudgery is our lot. Such things would do great harm in the hands of evil people. No stone walls will defend us when Ragnarok comes. All we have built here will be swept away. For so long we made magics there, in that tower. Enchantment has seeped into its very walls. The wind and snow have gnawed that tower to the bone. Soon we will knock it down. Harvey, your feast is prepared. I hope it pleases you. You are generous and hospitable indeed, great Suttunger. None can say otherwise. And see, your gift stands in pride of place, brimming with freshly fermented mead. Enough for a hundred Jotnar and more. This is an unexpected honor. You have filled it already with mead from your vaults, then. No need. It has filled itself. Such is the magic of the cauldron. Impressive. But what if it should run out of meat? Do you hear this? Harvey fears she will drink us dry. <laughs> my cauldron is deep, but my vault is deeper. Do not worry about my stores of mead. I have plenty to go around. Father, you know revelry does not suit me. Must I attend this feast? I have work to do. 
Your work can wait, my daughter. Take a moment. Enjoy yourself. Father, we have very little time. Enjoy yourself. I insist. Harvey, the guests are uneasy. They see an Aesir, but they do not know you. Will you address them? I am ready. Now, we will hear from our honored guest. The Lord of the Aesir has come in peace and brought us a mighty gift. Attend. I am Harvey, deft of tongue and quick of wit, here to spin you a tale. Your stories are wasted on them. They respect deeds, not hollow talk. You are all brothers and sisters to me. Do not be too familiar. Jotnar are slow to trust. I could go on, but who wants to hear words when there's meat and mead to be had? You know your audience well, it seems. Now we will drink deep and eat heartily. Let the feast begin! What can I do to get them to drink faster? The right food will inspire thirst. I should head to the kitchen. No guests in the kitchen! Out! Avi! Show us your might! Beat the champion, and we will drain our horns in your honor. Bring me this champion, and I will shine my knuckles on his jawbone. Behold! Do you mock me? I will not fight a withered old crone. <laughs> if you are too afraid to face her, well, that is that. <laughs> if she is truly your champion, then so be it. I'll try not to break her brittle bones, but I promise nothing. Don't be shy! Pass your fists against the champion! Is she too strong for you? <laughs> Don't be scared of that crumble bones! Indeed, you are mighty. You have fought old age and won. No one has ever done that before. Drink to me, then, as you promised you would. All of you! Empty your horns for heavy! The mead is half gone. The Nagy's cauldron can be drained. They beat the champion. Nobody's ever beaten the champion. I see musicians. Somber souls will only sip at their drinking horns. Conjure us a tune to raise their spirits. We are keen, but my harp has been stolen. We cannot play without it. Who would steal a song bring his instrument? There was a group of children playing round us earlier, with mischief in their eyes. I will get your heart back, and then you will play. Thralls, humans kept in bondage, bred to serve. Such is the fate of the lowly. That harp does not belong to you, little thief. You should give it back. What are you gonna do? Fight me for it? Why don't you give me a real challenge? All right. You want this harp? Go dive in that me. Climb as high as you can, though. I want a big splash. Watch and learn. Not you too. You'll break the strings with your sausage fingers. <laughs> but they won't do it. How many broken bones, you think? Fifty at least. Maybe a hundred. She flew! There. Now give back the harp so the musicians may play. Umias, hairy balls! That was amazing! 
You must be half raven. Who taught you such language? Mother. Why? Is there any sweeter music than the clash of drinking horns? Gosh. Greetings, Harvey. Will you test your arm at archery? You must hit three targets in a handful of heartbeats. I can shoot the wings of a wasp. Ah, but can you do it while mead adult? Before each attempt, you must take a drink. I'll take your challenge on one condition. For every drink I take, you take two. Ha! <laughs> That's a condition I'll gladly accept. Are you ready? Show me those targets. Then take a drink and let fly! Give it a try! What's the worst that can happen? Last time I played you... You look a bit wobbly there! Kev! Steady eye now. The last one is the hardest. Let us hope you hold your beer better than you... You are a keen shot, Harvey. Your hand grows steadier with drink, where others lose their eye. Another round? Uh, not for me. My belly royals like a knot of eels. And I see three of you. I think I should walk this off. Is that Loki there? Surely you would not dare. Gunluther looks glum. You're not drinking, Gunluther. I do not care for it. Drink is the heron that steals away one's memory. Some would say it frees the spirit of worry. We call those people drunks. <laughs> I see your wit is as sharp as your intelligence. Wit? I was simply stating a truth. Let us play a game. Ask me some riddles. I'll see if I can guess them. I enjoy a good riddle. How did you know? All great minds enjoy riddles. You fashion order from disorder, sense from nonsense. You have me at that. Very well, I will play. Give me an easy one to begin. Would that I had now what I had yesterday. Find out what that was. Mankind it mars, speech it hinders, yet speech it will inspire. It is ale, of course. A child could have solved that one. Would you like another? All right, I'm ready. Who is that shrill one who rides a hard road and has fared that way before? He kisses hard who has two mouths and goes only on gold. It is a hammer. Well done. I hope that wasn't just a guess. One more. I feel good about this one. Be prepared. This is the hardest yet. White-haired women, servants too, bore ale tub to the larder. No hand turned it, nor hammer beat it. But there, outside the islands, the upright one who made it. Old age is the answer. Old age? I think age is slowing your brain. The answer is swans and eggs. Well, now the game is over. Have I raised your spirits at all? I feel a little better. You are kind to attend to me, Javi. Most have given up trying. The guests are not... The cauldron is empty. I should tell Sutunga. Sutunger, your guests thirst for meat, yet the cauldron is dry. All gone? I never would have thought it possible. Gunnolder? Father? Open the vault. Instruct the thralls to bring more mead for my guests. Do they really need more, Father? Several are unconscious already. Do as I ask, daughter. Give them all they can drink. As you wish. I will open the vault. 
None will say that Sutunga is less than generous. None will be capable. Finally, the vault is open. The mead awaits within. Javi? I, I heard a noise and... What are you doing here? I wanted to speak with you away from the others. I brought you something. A gift. For me? Thank you, but why? Fate, Gunlother. We are helpless to escape it. And we were fated to be here now, together. You and I? How? It makes no sense. The Nornir spin their patterns. We can only surrender. We are entwined, spun together. There is perfect sense in that. Your words, your gift, your eyes when you look upon me. You bewilder me, Javi. I do not understand you. Listen and attend. I will show you all you need to know. Mead. By this strange magic, my Aesir evade our doom. Hmm. 
Urakin has promised answers at the will of Mimir. Red-handed. Betrayer! Deceiver! I treated you as an honored guest, and this is how you repay me? I saw you at the feast, Loki. Small wonder you disguised yourself after all you have done. Someone needed to warn my people of the treachery in your heart. Suttungar, show this Aesir how the Jotnar deal with thieves. Come! Embrace your death! You're not going anywhere, Harvey. I have lived too long to suffer one such as you. Your bones will splinter beneath my boots. It's nice. It looks unstable. Deceiver! False tongue! Dishonorable trickster! Be thankful it was me who took your meat and not Loki. What I do, I do for the safety of the Aesir and Vanir. You will change countless fates, Harvey, but not your own. We will see. Hirokin said to find her at Mimir's well. I will deal with that venomous trickster another day. I sorely underestimated the heft of your balls, Oathbreaker. You dare to show your face. Oathbreaker, I did to you what you did to my son. This is only fair. And Suttunger, what of him? Don't blame me for your own lack of character. You stole the mead. For the safety of my people, Loki. For Aesir, for Vanir, for all Asgard. But not for Jotnar. Not for me. You let the Jotnar into Asgard. So many dead. All so you could smuggle in your son. He was not safe here. They knew what he was and knew what he would become. Just as you do. That is the truth now. But how it will gnaw at you, knowing that to kill my son will undo your doom. Release him, Harvey! Release Fenrir, or I swear, I will kill you, here and now! You are out of favors, Trickster, and you are welcome to try! Why wait till Ragnarok, when you can die now? Let's see if you fight as well as you try! Forgive that. Are you finished? Curse you, Harvey. Your own distrust has undone you. Now go, and do not show your face again. I cannot be other than who I am. All this was fated. All this will happen again. 
But you will not be here to see it. Do not be so sure of that. The game is not over. The game is never over! <laughs> Gone. Who knows what mischief? But I will not see him again soon. Probabilities lead us here. The calculations give us hope. Speaking with someone. Do you have the mead? I do. Must I drink it now? Not yet. For once you drink, your hugur will take flight and be ever fixed. Drink only when the hour of your death approaches. Then why are we here? When Ragnarok has come and gone, this place will remain. Remain. And remember. Wise Mimir, keeper of the well, give me your counsel. You who seek immortality may find it within these waters. But there is a price. As always. The mead is not magic alone. It requires the sacred waters of Mimir's well to ferment into its final state. Before you take these waters, you must infuse them with the blood of the Asim. To remember you, it must know you. Surrender a part of yourself to the waters that nourish the world tree. Only then will you have that which you desire. You yourself have lost much for wisdom. Beheaded by those who did not value your learning. My Hugur is here. That is all that matters. I have learned to live incomplete. As will you. And if I make this sacrifice, what then? While death and ruin rage all around, the World Tree will keep you. Your body will die, but your Hugur will live on here. In time, you will be born anew. Into a new world, birthed from the ashes of the old. Do you vouch for this strangeness? I must believe it, for there is one I love dearly who depends upon it. And there is no other way? None. It seems I have no choice. You never did. How much would you sacrifice to be freed of fate's shackles? Would you give your tongue, your hand, your sight? I would give all that and more. Sacrifice has been made. Whosoever drinks of the mead, the world tree will remember them. And you, what is your sacrifice? My liberty. Sutungar and Gunlother will not forgive this trespass. They will hunt me now to the edges of the Nine Worlds. What are they to you? 
We ruled together for a time, a noble triad, as father, mother, and the sacred voice. Six times we tried to blunt the fangs of Ragnarok, and six times we failed. The mead was our seventh. But they feared how it might change the humans for the worse, so they locked it away and banished me from Utgardr. By your efforts, you have returned to me what is mine. The ashes of my husband. He made his own sacrifice for knowledge. With a few changes to this mead, I may undo old sorrows. Do as you will. I have had my fill of this cursed realm. Bright mind, heart's ease. Beloved, I will not fail you again. My work here is done. Now to Asgard, to save my people. Come, settle your mind, and tell me what you have seen. Strange things, Volka. I'm learning much and seeing more than my mind can understand. Go on. In Jotunheim, I sought and found a mead of incredible power. It promised a strange effect. To drink it would deliver me from death, shield me from the destruction of Ragnarok. By this mead, I hope to live beyond my own death. ...well into the future. Fascinating. Was that your final vision? They have not ended, not yet. Something compels me to return to Asgard. The elixir is ready when you are. The Nornir told me you'd be here. The cord is forged. Gleipnir, I call it. I'll wager there's a good story behind that wound. A tale for another time. Thank you for this. When you bind the beast, spare no loose ends. The cord will stretch or shrink to fit your needs. How tightly will it hold? The beast may resist. The more you tighten the cord, the stronger it will hold and the greater it will hurt, till the beast is rooted to the ground. Thank you, Ivaldi. You may go. You mean from Asgard, do you not? My debt to you is paid in full? Yes, as promised. Thank you, Harvey. I... Uh, I did not expect you to remember. Where will you go next? Under the mountains of Svartalfheim. Our mountains. To free the Earth's riches. For this is what I know best.
Harvey, you're a balm to my eyes. What happened to yours? A sacrifice for something greater. Is the wolf nearby? Yes, but he's grown. I have kept him company, but he's consumed by a sadness I cannot understand. Regrettable, but necessary. I knew from the start this wolf brought ill tidings. From the start it was a kind creature. But our mistrust and cruelty have robbed the poor wolf of its sweetness and life. Would it be a kindness to kill it then? We are past the time for such mercy. This wolf has power now that would test our strengths combined. I fear he is possessed of a power that renders him ever living. Then we will offer him a different fate. This cord is unbreakable. You must convince him to wear it. It will act as a leash, whose magic will signal that he's safely secured. An assurance to the Aesir who fear him. A beacon, that is all. No harm will befall the poor Fenrir. Fenrir, yes. You know the creature's name. Did Loki tell you? He did. It's a fine name. Yes. Dweller of the Fence. An apt name for his current fate. Henry! A good word has come! Leave me! I wish you well, Great Wolf. But a fear still hangs over Asgard. The Aesir worry about your growing size and strength. Do they now? And what do they have to be afraid of, old friend? Harvey brings a collar fashioned by the dwarves. A beacon that we may track from a distance to know where you roam. Wear this, and you may live and thrive in Asgard, without worry. I smell something sour. Wear the collar, or return to Jotunheimer. There's no third way. Son of Loki, have I not treated you with kindness? We are bonded, you and I. And as I trust my king, so you may trust me. Open your mouth. As a pledge of faith, you may take my hand if I am untrue. Fair. Be swift, Harvey. Words of prophecy! 
Second great sorrow. When the army goes to fight the wolf. How do you know these things? strike the killing blow. All my oaths remain unbroken. Anyone lesser would have succumbed to his hatred. If I could have done this any other way... There was no other way, Harvey. Our fates are fixed. Fate or no, you made a great sacrifice on my behalf. It was not for you. Do not think your kindness has made you a new friend, Lord of Imbeciles. I will kill you, all of you, gorging on Aesir flesh. You may strike the final blow, son of Loki, but I will savor my years of freedom before we meet again. <laughs> Come, old friend. The healing hands of Freya can help you. Have you come to say what I fear? Not to say, but to show a vision of the times to come. None living or dead now equal our heavy in arrogance. 
to believe that you could remake your fate thus. For all your efforts, for all your struggles, the threads of fate still bind you as tightly as ever. And yet, from this pattern, a single strand escapes the fray and stubbornly clings to the weave. Esir, Vanir, your doom will come. The earth will shake, the sun will die. Jötnar will stalk your streets as fire rains upon your heads. And the great wolf Fenrir will feast upon your blood. But you have found a way to live beyond this terror. Let it flow. To cheat your death. From the life tree we go. To the life tree we shall one day return. Your mind and spirit will search to a time far beyond your own. To a time in which you shall be reborn. None may follow. Loki least of all. It is done. Time to face our end. This was not my day to die. Eivor, you have awakened. With more to share, I hope. I returned to Asgard. And what did you see? I bound the wolf Fenrir, Loki's son, with an unbreakable cord. The beast was enraged by my actions. We fought and I prevailed, but I could not kill the beast. You visit lore and legend, things I would never have imagined to be real. Parables, yet here you live them as memories. Every moment there was as tactile and as vital as you and I seated in this hut. This is wonderful. Was there more? There was a... a betrayal. I betrayed my friend Tyr. I stood by as the great wolf mauled him, tearing his arm off at the joint. I could have said something to prevent it. Given him a warning. But I did nothing. How did it feel? I was unmoved by his pain. Not hateful, but I did not regret my indifference. A swig of poison that drinks like wine. Selfishness unmeasured often feels this way. What else did you see? I witnessed a final vision from the Nornir. The coming of Ragnarok. All was fire and ash, a chaos like a foul wind from the depths of Genungagab. But we were ready for the coming storm. Eight of us. We drank the mead, then stood and marched to our doom. That was the end of the Nornir's prophecy. How curious. Was there more? I can make sense of no more. I see. The thrust of these visions seem clear to me. As in your first reverie, a fear of betrayal hangs upon you. Odin has seen fit to gift you with his infinite knowledge and the treasure of his experience. Perhaps his tale is a warning. The indifference he felt is a great pity. See that you do not follow this same road. To do so would risk a loneliness, a personal exile, Worse than death. I understand. Or 
I hope I do. Thank you, Valka. 